I see that you have a white coat. Are you a doctor? I'm a doctor of pharmacy. I'm a pharmacist. So you like count pills and stuff? Hello everyone and welcome back to Happy Farm Life. My name is Dr. Sierra Richard. I'm a pharmacist dedicated to helping you live a happier, healthier life. And in today's video, I'm answering the question, what does a pharmacist do? As you saw in the skit at the beginning, some people believe that pharmacists just count pills, put pills in the bottle, put a label on the bottle, and send it out. That is far from the truth. And if you thought that, that's okay. That's how pharmacists are often portrayed in the media. I can't tell you the number of times I've seen on TV shows or movies that pharmacists are portrayed like that. However, pharmacists do so much more, and I think it's important to bring that to light. What you're probably most familiar with, and what I'm going to start with, is a community or retail pharmacist. These are the pharmacists that you see in your local pharmacy, in the pharmacy at Walmart or CVS or Walgreens, and they are constantly working for you. These pharmacists primarily work in dispensing roles, which means they are getting the pills to the patient. But there's a lot more steps than just putting in an order and pills popping out. These pharmacists help input orders or take any electronic prescriptions, and they look at the prescription to make sure that number one, it's the correct drug and correct dose for that patient, that it makes sense with any indication that they might have written on the prescription. Sometimes this is hard because we don't always know what's being treated. They make sure it is the right route, that this all makes sense with their other medication and there's no drug interactions with the medications that they're already on, and ensuring they don't have any allergies or other reasons why this medication may not be appropriate for them. In other words, they're working to make sure that the medication is safe and effective for the patient. If everything looks great, then they will go ahead and print the prescription out for a technician to fill. Once the technician has filled the prescription, then it is good to go for the pharmacist to check. At this point, they're just checking to make sure everything looks okay on the label, that nothing is confusing, all the words are correct, the right quantity of pills is in the bottle, and they're getting exactly what they're expecting to. Now that seems pretty easy, right? But that's not how the day typically runs. At the same time, they're getting phone calls from doctor's office, getting questions from patients and providers. They're working with insurance companies in order to make sure that your prescription is covered appropriately. And sometimes there's something called a PA or a prior authorization that they have to gather in order to get your prescription filled, which can lead to sometimes hours on the phone, but they do it for you. And if there is something that goes awry as they're verifying that order, they will have to call the doctor, have a discussion with them to make sure everything gets fixed and is appropriate for you when you come to pick it up. During this time, they're also giving vaccinations such as your annual flu shot. By the way, don't forget your flu shot. They may also be doing screenings for diabetes, heart disease, high cholesterol, and high blood pressure. And if that's not enough, many pharmacies also participate in medication therapy management where they go through and look at patients to make sure they're on the optimized therapy for whatever disease state they have, have all of the other medications that they need on board. For example, for patients with diabetes, they're also supposed to be on a statin for their cholesterol to make sure that we don't get into a predicament there. If they're not on it, this is an opportunity for the pharmacist to have a discussion with the doctor to see if it's appropriate for that patient. Oftentimes they're helping with over-the-counter prescription medication questions and herbal supplement questions that come from patients as they're shopping throughout the store. They're also taking the time to counsel patients on any new prescription medications or on that new OTC or herbal supplement that they're wanting to buy. The things that they're telling patients are about the side effects, when to take the medication, if it needs to be taken with food, any special directions or instructions that they need to know. Throughout all of this, they're also helping manage the team of pharmacy technicians and pharmacists that are working in the store to make sure everything runs smoothly and patients are getting taken care of in a timely manner. Depending on the state, these pharmacists also may be prescribing medications for patients throughout the day. States such as Idaho allow pharmacists to prescribe birth control with a certain collaborative practice agreement. Pharmacists in the state of Missouri, where I live, are also able to prescribe medications to help stop smoking. So you may be like, wow, that's a lot of things going on. And they're doing this while filling over 500 prescriptions a day, sometimes with one pharmacist. Pharmacists frequently don't get lunch breaks or breaks of any kind. Although this is changing, it's still a problem. So next time you're coming to your pharmacy and you know your doctor just called on a prescription, give your pharmacy the benefit of the doubt. It is busy, they are hectic, and they are trying to work for you. And as you can see, they're putting way more effort in than just putting pills in a bottle. Before I go any farther, I want to remind you that October is American Pharmacist Month, so if you go to your pharmacy this month, which a lot of you probably will, make sure you go ahead and say thank you to your pharmacist. 
There are many different roles and types of hospital pharmacists, so I'm just gonna keep it pretty broad so you have an idea of the things that they do. Some pharmacists stay in the central pharmacy and they're more of an operational pharmacist. Basically, this means these pharmacists are doing the operational day-to-day -day things that are required for patients to get meds from the pharmacy to their bed. Similar to a retail pharmacist, the main role of this type of pharmacist is to verify prescription orders. Anything that is ordered for a patient in the hospital will go through a pharmacist checked. Everything from fluids, like an IV fluid of normal saline, all the way down to an antibiotic, and everything in between. Similarly, we're looking to make sure it's the right dose, frequency, the indication or reason for use is correct, because oftentimes we have access to the patient's medical records, so we can look to check to see what the diagnosis is and if this makes sense for the patient. We're making sure the drug is the most appropriate, that the quantity is correct. I work in pediatrics, so I'm frequently doing calculations to make sure the dose is appropriate for the patient. We're also checking for any drug interactions at the time, for anything else that they're on, and anything we may need to intervene on and let the nurse know about before they give the medication. Where I work, we also do pharmacy dosing service, where we help and dose medications for physicians when they want to put them on a certain antibiotic. We also will order drug levels for those medications that need additional monitoring to make sure that the levels don't get too high or too low, so it's safe and effective for the patient. Any doses that are coming directly from the pharmacy also have to be checked by a pharmacist. So we're looking at sterile compounds, non-sterile compounds before they go up to the patient floors. Again, we're looking to make sure that there's no deficits, nothing that could be an issue for the patient, and it's the right drug and the right dose for the right patient. Sometimes pharmacists will assist in sterile and non-sterile compounding. So sterile compounding being IVs and chemotherapy, and non-sterile compounding being things such as powders, ointments, or liquids. If the pharmacist isn't making it, they're checking what the technician is doing, as we have pharmacy technicians who are also awesome working to help us get this done. Unlike in a retail pharmacy, we can't just have bottles of pills sitting around, so we have unit dose packaging. A lot of these things come in bottles and we have to package them ourselves, so pharmacists are checking that as the technician makes them. One of the biggest things that pharmacists and hospitals do is answer medication questions. They answer these questions from nurses and physicians and other providers that are in the hospital who may want to know how to administer a medication, what medication to give, any side effects that might be occurring. They also frequently call us if they think a patient is having a reaction to the drug to figure out how to treat it best. As you can also imagine, we're managing our team in the pharmacy to make sure everything is running smoothly. We usually have multiple pharmacists and technicians working at the same time. Some pharmacists are also decentralized, which means they may be up on the patient floors, like the physicians and nurses, versus being in the central pharmacy. Some of the things that decentralized pharmacists can do can also be centralized, but it just kind of depends on the institution. Decentralized pharmacists typically go on rounds with the medical team, so we watch Grey's Anatomy and see the attending and a bunch of residents. That's not really how it goes. Rounding teams are usually made up of the physician, the residents, as well as students, nurses, dietitians, respiratory therapists, physical therapists. It just depends on the patient and what team is rounding. While they're on rounds, they give recommendations for medication therapy changes that might be relevant after they've done chart reviews, where they look at the patient's chart and their med list and the indications for medications and make sure they're on one, everything that they should be, two, taking off things that they shouldn't be, and three, on the most appropriate therapy for their weight, age, renal function, and liver function. We're also looking at other lab values such as their glucose, any sort of antibiotic culture results. Basically, we're doing a full check to make sure everything medication-wise is appropriate. All types of pharmacists are frequently teaching students and have students on rotations with them on rounds or maybe even down in the central pharmacy to learn more about what's going on. Decentralized pharmacists frequently participate in code blue situations in order to help with the medication side of things if a patient is coding. When a patient comes into the hospital, usually a pharmacist is reviewing their medication list to make sure everything that they need to be restarted on is restarted. We do the same thing when the patient leaves to make sure they're started back on any home medications we may have had to stop while they're in the hospital, as well as put on any new medications at the right dose, frequency, and a prescription has been sent. If patients are started on any new medications, the pharmacist typically comes in to talk to them to give them counseling points, tips on how to take the medication, what side effects to look out for, and the things that they need to know. These pharmacists are not always directly taking care of patients, but still doing things that help them, such as spending time on hospital committees to make sure pharmacists are available to answer questions about the medication process of any changes that might need to be made. 
They help write policies for the hospital, especially those pertaining to medication therapy and drug safety. They may also do medication use evaluations, which is where we look at how we're using medications to make sure it's the most appropriate, as well as doing research. As you can see, hospital pharmacists are also very busy in their jobs. If you've learned something new so far, go ahead and give this a thumbs up before we talk about our next pharmacist, which is our ambulatory care pharmacist. Ambulatory care pharmacists are a little bit different as they don't have a pharmacy base at all, but rather are based in clinic settings. They are typically there to help physicians manage patients, sometimes in between their visits, through phone calls and telemedicine, or at their visits to manage certain parts of their medication therapy, such as diabetes therapy or hypertension management. These pharmacists are frequently counseling patients, giving them tips on their medication, and helping them manage side effects of their therapies. These pharmacists frequently give vaccinations, change medication therapy, and may even do labs or screenings, such as diabetic foot exams, checking your blood pressure or cholesterol. These pharmacists also teach and do research as well. These are three of the most frequently found jobs in pharmacy, but there are plenty of others which I will have scrolling across the screen here for you. Some of the things that pharmacists do is teach in an academic setting as a professor, work in an industry pharmacy, so for a pharmaceutical company. They may be a consultant for other organizations, work in long-term care, work in a nuclear pharmacy, and many more. No matter where a pharmacist is working, I can guarantee you they're doing a heck of a lot more than putting any pills in a bottle. If you liked this video, please give it a thumbs up and don't forget to hit that subscribe button so you don't miss any future videos and I'll see you next time. Bye. These pharmacists primarily were real, blah, blah, blah. these pharmacists, the main thing they're doing is helping adjust their pie. They may also be doing diet, blah, blah. they may, if it's based on weight and pharmaco, pharmacist in my, pharmacist in, we're also looking at other lab valve.